Ooh. Anyway, hi. It's your old pal Kip, Crazy Uncle Kip, with the beard and the thing and the fat and the sweaty. Uh, it is Memorial Day, and I am here at the shop, as per usual. And uh, somebody had suggested I make a quick video uh, about the differences between, or a recommendation for, the Ford Transit and the ProMaster. So this is going to not have a lot of special effects in it and not be very useful because you already bought a ProMaster. That's why you're here. But I suppose if you're shopping, you know, do what you will do. I just happened to go on um, the web, the webs, and look up uh, pricing. Pricing is kooky <clears throat> here in 2023. It turns out the ProMaster has a very uh, comparable cognate over in the Transit. Um, a medium roof Transit is 100 inches tall, a ProMaster is 99 inches tall, a high roof ProMaster. The Transit wheelbase is 148 inches and the ProMaster wheelbase on the long one is 159 inches, 11 inch difference. And the gross vehicle weight, the Transit is 9,500 pounds and the ProMaster is uh, 9,350 in that configuration which would be a 3500 non-extended high roof long wheelbase. In the Ford you get a choice of engines, the naturally aspirated six cylinder or for 1800 bucks more you can have the Eco Poop, which is a lovely thing. And uh, but anyway, with the normal in uh, engine which is a 35 six cylinder, um, the grand total would be $50,400 over in the ProMaster. I think you get more driver crap standard, but I don't know. But it's 51 too, so it's 700, 800 bucks more. Who knew? For years, the ProMaster was slightly cheaper than the Transit when all is said and done for a comparable vehicle. But those two permutations are quite comparable. Here's my opinion on the Transit. The Transit is a good vehicle. It is comparable to the ProMaster uh, in many ways, the most important one being overall cost of ownership. A few years ago, there was a guy who had a fleet of transits, and I was, of course, handling a fleet of ProMasters, and I, he posted all his numbers. This was over at the ProMaster forum, because I think he had both. But anyway, if you look at all the numbers in aggregate, they are almost dead even in terms of overall cost of ownership, which is what counts. Um, the transits historically broke in in similar ways to the ProMaster, but in different ways. The Transit's had an issue with the drive shaft, and the Transit has a $1,200 water pump, and the ProMasters never need a water pump, and blah, blah, blah. But when you added up all his numbers, and I actually went through his numbers quite uh, meticulously, the overall cost of ownership in terms of maintenance was, a, was basically the same, or so close that, you know, it's up to luck. My feeling on the Transit is it is a quality vehicle, I have reasons why I prefer the ProMaster, but I am not uh, right and everybody who prefers the Transit is wrong. It, it boils down to mostly a matter of taste. And then in the final analysis, your overall experience is, is mostly dictated by luck, especially in the terms that I'm talking about, which is four, five, six hundred thousand miles. Good luck and bad luck show up in large piles of money over that long duration. Whereas if you're a motorhome person or even a tradesman that hauls around ladders and shingles and such, you might, you might put 8,000 miles on the thing a year, so we're talking over a 10-year span. Whereas if you drive a whole bunch, like an expediter, which happens to be my industry, that's 120, 150,000 miles a year, so, you know, the luck shows up in big, big checks to write. Here's uh, my basic logic. This is a filler video. This isn't very important, but people like to watch me tell jokes, so okay. Hey, my first girlfriend didn't really love me. I could tell by the way she took the money. That's an example of a short joke. I'm glad you're here. Glad we're here together. I prefer the ProMaster for a variety of reasons, but the main ones being front-wheel drive to me is, it seems weird to say, but it's superior in use because you do not need snow tires for now 10 years almost. I have just left all season tires on the vans all year long and they do more than fine in the winter. They do fantastic. Um, the two vans have the same tire size, I believe, as a matter of fact. So, there you go. And with the rear wheel drive vehicle, it almost, yeah, it does. It, in the Midwest, it dictates snow tires in the winter. The Transit has going for it, if you're towing regularly or heavy or whatever you're doing, the Transit, a rear wheel drive vehicle is better. It distributes the weight better, it's going to be more durable, 
a drive shaft is better than front wheel drive axles for towing and generally speaking they will tow more. I did not look up the total tow ratings but I know you can get a dual uh, a dually transit that will tow a shit ton whereas the max on the ProMaster currently and even in the past is around 7,000 pounds. I don't kind of don't feel you should be towing 7,000. If you're towing regularly 7,000 pounds you need a truck. We're moving on. If you're if you opt for the EcoBoost which is 2,000 bucks well spent. You'll like that extra, oh, I don't know, 200 extra foot-pounds of torque. Uh, it is nice to have, and it, it if you want to go fast, so, and is a consideration that most people don't have in a cargo van, but some do. Um, going fast or maintaining 75 or 80 miles an hour, is, that's a big deal if you need to do that in your motorhome application, in your people-moving application in your uh, bank robbery getaway vehicle application, that sort of thing. Um, long story short, I uh, for a few years I was a stage manager for a touring band and we had six liter Chevy vans, which I thought, well, that's stupid, we're, we're, we're paying a fuel economy penalty for what? A shit ton of power? Well that shit ton of power came in handy quite often because we would, we would cruise at 90 often because I've spent enough time in the van and I want to get home, that sort of thing. Moving on. So, the Transit gets a nod, nod for power and for towing. The ProMaster, I feel, uh, it, because it's front-wheel drive, even with a longer wheelbase, I believe it has a tighter turning circle. Really excellent turning circle in both the short and long wheelbase versions. No complaints there. The, um, I feel that the ProMaster interior is higher quality. I suppose I can't speak to the 22 and 23 ProMasters because I haven't, I haven't even driven one yet. They won't show up here for another couple of years because they're all still in warranty, but um, assuming they work out some of the bugs with the electronics, uh, and, and speaking to the older version, I don't know, the Transit just feels kind of rental car to me. Um, it feels like Ford built it to, the bu to a budget, which they certainly did, as did Ram, but I don't know, I prefer the interior. Many people detest the seating position in the ProMaster, and it's a deal breaker for them. I happen to dig the Ralph Cramden action, but, uh, and for me it's quite comfortable. Uh, I prefer it. The Transit, it feels like a van. Comparable, I suppose, but if you hate it, you know, don't buy a van where you hate the seating position. That's, that seems to go without saying. And uh, what else? I, um, I couldn't say, because I don't have direct information, I have information from that fellow I told you about whose Transits were all a few years old. But it seems to me that the ProMaster, pretty much across the board, gets one mile per gallon better. Which is a big consideration if you're doing 100,000 miles a year. That, that shit adds up. Less gas, the more merrier. As you know, I have videos on this, but the ProMaster in summertime, if you keep it to around 63, 64 miles an hour, will give you 20 miles per gallon, no problem. That's a big number. That's a huge number. Alright, so, in most capacities, in terms of reliability and serviceability, I feel like it boils down to taste. Um, because of those comparable overall costs of, uh, costs of ownership. And, and um, oh, uh, many people prefer the ProMaster's flatter sides. that has less tumble home. By the way, that angle that uh, the sides of a vehicle lean in is called tumble home. Automotive design geeks unite. And uh, the ProMaster is quite straight. Its floor is a few inches lower. Another advantage, I suppose, if you're building out a motorhome or some kind of specialized vocational truck is that in the ProMaster, there is there are no electronics or fuel or brakes or any of that crap below the floor. You can drill holes in the floor all you want. The only thing that would be there are brake lines, which are attached to the to the frame rails. Although both of these vehicles are unibodies, and um, and that's it. All the electrical runs in the sides, upper sides of the ProMaster. Not that there's much as the brake lights and the cab lights, a few other things. But you don't have to worry about drilling through the floor and cracking into a fuel line like you would in a Chevy van or punching a brake line or that kind of thing. You could remove the floor and drive around with a glass bottom bus. What a tourist attraction. Lastly, I suppose we should talk about the elephant in the room, which is the Sprinter. Do not, under any circumstances, succumb to the temptation to buy a Sprinter. Now, I have a terrible history with all German cars, and a particularly bad history with Mercedes. And that uh, seems, to, uh, seems to still be prevalent. 
I know they made a gas version for a while. I think they still make it. That would be better than the diesel, but I'm telling you, when I was shopping for vans in 2014, the first year of the Transit and Pearlmaster, and of course the Sprinter's been around for a while, a guy whose opinion I trust said, he said, just set $26,000 a year aside for maintenance and you'll be fine. I'm not doing that. Uh, diesel is a bad deal because the fuel is more expensive, thereby negating any uh, fuel cost savings. And when it needs maintenance, the Mercedes will kill you. You'll want to hurl yourself off a bridge. And of course, being German, they're terrible and unreliable. And being diesel, they're terrible and unreliable. You combine those things. People seem to think that Germans know something just because the prices are insane. Well, the high price doesn't make it a good vehicle, and Germans, historically, are terrible engineers, preferring hyper-complicated solutions to problems that didn't exist. I could regale you with stories, but I, I, am, I am firmly in the Germans don't know what the hell they're doing, and when they do, they do it poorly. But that's me. That's not a racial thing. That's an automotive thing. Okay, I have wasted enough of your time. Those are my opinions on Transit and Promaster. I don't think you can go wrong with either one. They're going to break. All machines break. They're going to break in different ways. Okay. And, uh, you know, you may dig it. I suppose people look at you less weird with the Ford rather than the thing that looks like a dustbuster fucked a stormtrooper. But, hey, you, you enjoy the fun. All right. And, uh, and uh, you're welcome to uh, call me with questions or email me at the numbers provided. But don't show up here because we're still, I'm still digging out of the job. And, I, eh. Eh, too much work. Getting old. Love you. Let's hug. Let's hug it out. And goodbye.